Welcome back to AJ Club Sport. So, unfortunately, a lot of tuners are gonna hate me for this video, but uh, you know, we cut through the bullshit just straight to the point. And I've got to tell you what I got to tell you about ECU tuning on the GR Yaris. Now, uh, I've owned this car for almost three years and uh, I have tried various solutions. I have tried uh, the best, let's say, market rated best add-on external tuning box. And on this I've tried uh, the best settings, uh, map, normal maps, custom maps. I've tried uh, an aftermarket ECU remap and uh, I've found what the actual solution was. So let's go and dig deep into it. First things first. Uh, this car is uh, not an Evo, it's a modern car, okay? So what happens is uh, the GI Yaris has a very, very um, sophisticated ECU. And this ECU, uh, in every given moment, is like monitoring so many parameters that include the ECU, the second TCU that controls the transmission unit. And this brings me to the first point. So anybody that is benching uh, on a rolling road, a GI Yaris, in four-wheel drive mode, if the car uh, is impossible, that can get a clean reading. You can launch it the first time, and probably that will be the cleanest reading. But as you continue launching the car, with no changes to the ECU, you will see that the car continues to adapt and you see that the results are different. This is because on a, a four-wheel drive dyno bench, basically the car starts to uh, think he's on some strained terrain and he feels the difference of braking of uh, the dyno between the front axle and the real axle and it starts to adjust, to convert and it, it's a mess. Uh, it's been tried times after times. So, first of all, on a stock ECU and TCU GI Yaris, you want to bench the car by pulling the handbrake and only attaching the front uh, wheels to either dyno bench hubs or to uh, uh, two-wheel drive dyno. This is the first point. Everything else, I know I'm gonna be hated for this, but it's just, it doesn't work in this way. I'm sorry, it's been proven, it doesn't work. I tried it also on my car and it just doesn't work. Uh, almost two years ago now, uh, I was fiddling around with the tuning box because that was the only option. And also we were developing the air intake for this car and it was craziness. We just couldn't manage to get the right readings until we were going in four-wheel drive mode. Because at the beginning, like the numbers were at the stars, so we're like, wow, that's super. But then the car continued to adapt going down. Same fuel, nothing changed 15 minutes after that. Temperatures were good, air intake was good, everything was fine and this happened. So we've got the elephant out of the room about this and let's go on. Tuning boxes. So. While tuning boxes could be quite effective on diesel cars, on certain ones, and on certain um, fuel cars, basically they do not work with such a high-level trick ECU. Why? Because basically it does give you a power increase, but the ECU understands things are going on the way it's not expecting, and it continues to adjust. So either you get big boost cuts or you get the limp mode from the engine and let me say if you keep the tuning box in a low setting the benefits are so small that it's just not worth it one thing works on the tuning box that hasn't worked on a, on a normal let's call them normal remap till now that is the speed limiter removal if you attach and cut your wirings and attach their tricks but this is uh, another topic. Plus, the car goes at 2.30, it's quite enough in certain situations, maybe not, but for track, for track and rally, it's more than enough, obviously. And um, I would even want shorter gears if it's for that, yeah. 
of course. Uh, okay, so tuning with uh, standard tuning. What is standard tuning? Basically, any tuning you can find out there today that is not ECU tech. Okay, we all know ECU tech coming from Evos and other cars in the past and uh, ECU Tech uh, are a very reputable company. I don't even have their map at the moment, okay? I'm not sponsored by them. But they are the only ones that have managed to enter the ECU and reprogram it completely and in a very, very short time also through OBD and even multi-map it in a way that all the layered programming tables, ignition, timing, uh, all the part of boost, pedal maps, transmission, everything, okay, there's hundreds of, of tuning tables, can be just erased and written new. What does this mean? It means that you are writing the ECU as if it was, let's say, a Cyvex or a Motec or any other racing ECU, because to a difference to all the ECUs, like for example the Evo, the Mitsubishi, say 6, 7, 8, 9, whatever, uh, those ECUs did not have enough computing power to do all the operations required in the time they were required, not enough internal memory and everything. On this new ECU it's all different. So why not just map with you know, whatever map I find out there because there's so much on the market. Well, as you can see, all the most reputable, reputable companies out there, uh, just to say something very far from me, once again, not sponsored, Litchfield, that is always on the lips of everybody, they were not offering a remap and they were offering a tuning box that had a very, very low setting, about 300 horsepower. So that's acceptable. Small gains on a car like this, uh, you know, you're hard pressed to see the difference, but so they were not offering ECU tuning because they could not guarantee the product. So all the tuners out there are just trying to make a business. I understand perfectly. It's fine, but it does not work. It does not work to the extent of having a map that is perfect. So uh, at the moment you can get an ECU tech map redone on a single map and uh, uh, very shortly they tell me that uh, uh, from internally they're going to make um, multi-map available and OBD uh, compatibility for writing and reading the ECU so no more pins and, and cables and all that on the top of ECU. This is a great news and finally it's possible to have uh, for example, you can have your city map, you can have your 95 octane map, you can have your 100 octane map, and you can have your, for example, anti-lag map, light anti-lag, but yeah, you can do that also. And this will make a huge difference to the car. Personally, I love the Cyvex option, but I just wasn't ready to, pay, to spend that kind of money on a Cyvex. So, um, my friends at Acme Motorsport, Acme Racing, are um, about to map one with cams in the next days and uh, maybe I'll let you know how this goes and possibly also my car will go in for the same treatment with uh, springs and camshafts from Kelford and uh, I'm very eager to try this easy version and while I'm at it, I will want to change the head studs too, because uh, there is some lift from those. And uh, many are talking of forging the engine, but until you keep it around 350 horsepower, it appears to be very safe, obviously, if you take good care of your engine. But, you know, once you, you start playing around with the power, you always open a question mark and you have to know it and uh, you have to take very, very good care of your engine and have a very good ear to any problems. So guys, this was uh, all about ECU tuning. I hope this helped because really you can get ripped off. Uh, once again, not because they are thieves, but because what they, they give you is going to be written through a standard map and is going to be overridden by the safety features and multi-maps multi within the ECU, 
without them even knowing. And this is why the car will never go in the same way. Trust me, I got a map of these on my car now, one of the best tuners, 7,000 kilometers, I hate it. Okay, that's all for today. Have a great one. Bye now.